If you spend the first 30 minutes of class talking about your life story and then have to cram 10 eight counts into the last 15 minutes because you really only taught so that you can give a TED talk and get a cool Instagram video then listen here buddy old pal we're gonna help you teach better. Being a good choreographer does not automatically make you a good teacher. It's one thing to know something and another thing to know how to teach it. Problem is, in the urban dance choreography world, no one is really teaching you how to teach. If only someone somewhere was able to break down the science of learning and teaching dance. Steezy has spent years creating premium online dance classes and programs for thousands of dancers all over the world. We collect data and feedback and work with our instructors to design the best learning experience for our students. And we're gonna share what we learned with you. Make sure you teach how, not what. If I show you my hand right now and go like this, I don't need to tell you that I'm making a fist because you can see that I made a fist. So if there are moves that students can visually understand, then save your words for the things that they can't see. For example, I'm tensing up all my fingers, so you should almost be shaking. As Steezy, we call this self-assessment. We like to use phrases like, if it feels like this, then you're doing it right. Play the music ASAP. Think about the last time you took a class. What was the best part? It was when you're actually doing the dancing. You start connecting the moves to the music and start feeling yourself more and more with every run. But one time I took a class where the choreographer taught the entire piece and then let us see it with music, like twice. And maybe they did this for the wow factor when you show your full masterpiece at the end. But guess what? Class is not about you. It's about the student. And you know what dance students want? To dance. And according to our calculations, we found that the best time to play music is as soon as possible. If there's a class video, take advantage of it. Class videos are lit. I love being challenged to perform in front of people. And yeah, I like posting the video if I'm proud of how I did. Which makes sense. Dance was meant to be enjoyed and shared. And technology has evolved to just widen the pool that we can share with. So if the class is being filmed, as a teacher, you can use the video as a tool to one, help your students with their confidence. Two, build stage or camera presence. Three, watch and self-critique so they can find what they need to work on. And four, post it as their personal dance log. Before a class, prep your counts, sounds, and lyrics. This doesn't mean that you have to figure out every single count, but you do have to have a way to communicate each of your moves. Also, it's so easy to Google lyrics and knowing them makes the learning process so much smoother. So you have no excuse not to know the words. Pace your class reasonably. Unless you're deliberately training your students in fast choreography pickup, do not cram 28 counts in the last five minutes. If you do this just because you're trying to finish your piece, I'll say it again. The class is not about you. Don't hijack the experience from your students. So whether you're already teaching workshops or are aiming to teach them, then you're on the right path. And lucky for you, these tips are really easy to implement. So make sure you implement them. And if you do, your DMs will be flooded with booking requests from, from workshops, from studios. You're gonna need an agent probably. Yeah. Just kill it. Just. Do it! Do it! <laughs> Make sure to hit that subscribe button <laughs> for new dance videos every single week. Go and teach, Princess Peach. Yahoo! <laughs> <laughs>